Longhorn fans, it's time to get your horns up. Play the Texas Lottery today for your chance to win exciting prizes. And remember, luck happens to people like Diane Hoskins who keep a lookout for chances to win from the Texas Lottery. Diane won Longhorn prizes and Texas Lottery scratch tickets. Hook them horns, scratch them tickets, and say hello to Jordan Shipley who's with us now. Good to see you again. How you hey. been? Good to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah, we, we were just talking about how the weather is going to be so nice this weekend for this Texas OU matchup. And, uh, Sark, you the your two games have been just blazing hot with it. So I imagine your guys will appreciate some cooler weather, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, especially after last Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been hot. We've been playing in some hot stuff. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully we can get a, get a game like this guy had out of, a, of one of these wideouts here Saturday. Well, that's <laughs> part of the reason why I brought that up. 2008 was a very hot day. But it was a real hot day for this guy. Uh, I'm sure Longhorn fans will remember, Texas was down 14-3, to three, the number one Oklahoma. He takes the kickoff back 95 yards for the touchdown and completely flips the game after that. But you did that throughout your career. Was it, is that one of those career moments that stands out in your mind? Yeah, absolutely. That was, that was uh, of, of all the games, probably that's the one I get asked about the most. And uh, that was just a fun moment. I remember walking out there, and for some reason, it didn't always happen, but I had a feeling walking out on the field uh, after going down 14-3 to three that, you know, just something big was going to happen. And sure enough, you know, the sea just parted, and, um, you know, the rest is history. It was fun. And uh, obviously with, with your two good friends, Quan Cosby, Colt McCoy, you guys had quite the, the trio working at the time. And it was uh, – Quan used to say this, and I think Colt used to say it as well, that – all it took was a look. Sometimes you look at one another and you knew what was – if something was going to change or what you were going to do on the field. There. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, that's a huge credit to Colt, I think, and um, and Quan was, was one of the best I've ever seen as far as just, you know, kind of picking stuff up and making little adjustments on the field. And um, so it was good. We had that we had that small town. We're all small town guys, so we kind of had that little connection. But hey. Quan had a huge game too. I think he had 11 or 12 catches that and game. He, and so. he has the block that he says he'll gladly do all over again and get kicked out of a game in this day with what he did to Lindy Holmes on that, uh, on that play down the field. He used to say that, uh, you know, you guys were very, very close, but you were pretty competitive against one another, weren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, that's just, you know, part of being guys and playing football and all that. You're competitive with each other. But, uh, you know, those are – Quan is one of my favorite – guys of all time just unbelievable you know player but even better person hey what I, what I want to hit you on here a little Jordan is one you played for your dad in high school yep. okay my son is on our team now oh man so f give me a little like <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a son playing for your dad what was that like in high school man how, how was that you know it was it was overall it was great uh, there was definitely some times when it was hard and uh, you know especially coming through and he, he always had, felt like he had to be harder on me than he had than he was on everybody else so I got that extra you know and, and every once in a while you're like man dad you know I don't you, you don't have to do that all the time but <laughs> he just you know when you when your son is part of the team you, you obviously want to make a point that um, you know you're held to a certain standard and all that stuff so he did that but it was a lot of fun just growing up and being around it and you know from a little kid running around and holding field goals at five or whatever yeah. and then you know catching balls and just always kind of being around it to get to play for him. And, and um, you know, that, it was just something special I'll never forget. I, I want to ask you about uh, something that you did as well as any uh, athlete in uh, Longhorn history, and that's overcome injury and adversity. Because your first two years on campus, you had injuries. And, and I remember sitting down with Coach Brown to do uh, the, the preseason show before what would then be your third year in the program. And we were going over different things, and this guy could do this, and this guy could do that. And I, and I pointed to you, and I said, how about Jordan? He said, if, he said, if we can keep him healthy, he'll be one of the greatest we've ever had. He goes, we've got to see that. And then, and then you really took off from that. How difficult was it for you coming through all of that, the hamstring, the other injuries, all, all of that, to where you could still have four very productive seasons? Yeah, it was very tough. I can look back and say it was, you know, it was it was a great character building time for me, but it was it was not easy. So, came in after after uh, Roy Williams, B.J. Johnson, Sloan Thomas, probably the you know the best trio of receivers to come through. And then, so we were we were light at receiver at the time. So I was going to come in and start as a true freshman. 
and about a week into two a days, blew my knee out, and then kind of earned the starting job back the next year, uh, and came in and tore my hamstring and just kept pulling it, kept pulling it, and then had another knee surgery, and that was 2005 national championship team. So, uh, so that was a rough one. And after that, he was Coach Brown was like, well, we'll have to see it before we believe it. So they they let me play some, but you know, not a ton that next year, and then I got the starting job job back my second year to play, but. Um, and he told me at one point, he said, you know, if you just want to come to school and get your school paid for, you don't have to keep doing this. And, and I said, no, nah, that's not why I'm here, you know. Uh, but it was just trying to overcome that and get back in the rhythm and, and thank goodness, you know, I got to, it, it worked out well because I got to play with Colt for four years and, and uh, you know, in my opinion, one of the best college quarterbacks to ever play. Isn't it amazing how football and life are paralleled? Yeah. And the life lessons we learn on the field or in the locker room, like it's fascinating. Like I'm sure – You've been able to take that, right, and carry it to your family and to your, to yeah. your sons and that and that whole thing, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's it's um, just one of those deals where you know not everything's gonna be given to you and not everything's gonna be easy and and uh, you know you just gotta keep persevering and overcome and believe and have faith and that was the biggest thing for me is just you know believing that one day I I I've believed I could play and I was good enough to play. It was just a matter of you know hanging on and and working and rehabbing and and. Uh, just basically doing what it takes to, you know, to be the best that you can be. And that's true. I mean, that's – football has been, you know, I guess one of the biggest foundations for my whole life going forward and all the lessons that you learn. Yeah, that's cool. Jordan Chipley's our special guest. We're going to get to some other questions for him. He's got some fascinating stuff going on in his life. We'll get to that when we continue. Longhorn Weekly with Coach Sark. From here, Pluckers, the West Campus location, Austin. Presented by the Texas Lottery continues in a moment. Second and five. Robinson now in motion behind the Texas offense. And it's a handoff. Brooks up the middle. First down and more. JV, say goodnight to this one. Jonathan Brooks, 54 yards for a Texas Longhorn touchdown. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with Coach Sark, our special guest, Jordan Shipley. Here from Pluckers, the West Campus location. Before we get back to some stuff, uh, uh, JB continues to just run with great abandon. We talked at length about him last week, and then he comes up with another career game. He really is on fire. You know, it, it, we've been talking about this, like, in our system, the running back starts to take on the identity of our team, right? And we're a run-first system that everything else comes off of it. And so when we go to team run, there's no RPOs, there's no passes. It's like, here we come. And all of a sudden, JB's kind of risen to give me the ball mentality. And – I think the team feels it, you know, and the beauty of it, what, what we're finding out, he's faster than we probably all thought. He's a little more elusive than we thought. He made a couple safeties miss the other day in, in some tight quarters. Uh, and his hands, I mean, he catches the ball out of the back for really well. So all the things are adding up to, here's a guy who sat behind Bijan and Roshan for two years. It's finally become his time, and, and he's, he's kind of taking it and running with it. Uh, Jordan Shipley's our, our, our special guest here, and uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to get into. Of course, the pride of Burnett, Texas, but uh, not only uh, an All-American at Texas and uh, two-time All-American earned consensus first team honors in 2009, the only player in UT history, history, to score a touchdown by a reception, kickoff return, and punt return in the same season and only one of four to uh, achieve that feat during a career as well. Now, you uh, have also branched out from there, you've got a family business in ranch real estate, Shipley Ranches. Uh, you and your wife, Sonny, singers and songwriters. Uh, you hosted, uh, now you're going to have to help me on this. Is that Tecomati? Tecomati, yeah. Yeah, yeah on the channel. Outdoor Channel, a television show there. You've been on uh, uh, Texas Game Day on Longhorn Network as well. Um, I mean, you just kind of spread yourself out all over the place. I mean, do you find a lot of different things, interest to your liking? Yeah, I've, I've always loved land and loved outdoors. And um, so, you know, that was kind of a, a natural fit to, to go into and, and just, um, you know, from a real estate standpoint, you know, I'm not a super smart guy. So I figured, you know, the, the ranch side's a little behind the residential commercial. And, and um, I just figured you pack, you know, 30 million more people in the next 25 years into Central Texas and it's got to be okay. Uh, so, yeah, so, and, and plus it's, you know, you get to run around and look at pretty country and water and, you know, big hills and all that kind of stuff. So it's hard to convince my wife when I get home at the end of the day that I've been working, but she said, I see the pictures, you're not working. Yeah. 
there's work and then there's work, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Hey, I want I want to shift gears here a little, go back a little to the recruitment process of you deciding to come to UT, and then once you're here on a little different avenue. Did you always know you wanted to come here? Actually, no, I wasn't just a huge diehorn long, uh, diehard Longhorn fan or anything. Um, I always, you know, I think UT was always kind of, to me, the premier university of, in Texas. And, and uh, But at the same time, I just, you know, I had a quarterback that was coming out uh, that went to high school with me, Stephen McGee, that was really good. And so he actually ended up going to A&M. And uh, it, was a, it, it wasn't the easiest decision in the world, but, I, but my mindset was, you know, I could go to Texas Tech and probably catch a whole bunch of footballs and probably not be great. You know, the team wouldn't be great. Uh, or I could, you know, come here and, and potentially have a chance to play for a national championship and, and uh, you know, at least – play on a team that was going to compete at the highest level. And I felt like if I could come in and do that and, and play and, and do it here, then it would mean something and maybe I'd have a chance to play at the next level. So that was that was kind of the biggest thing. It boiled down to, you know, I'm from Texas. I wanted to represent Texas, and this is the University of Texas. And so, um, you know, at the end of the day, that's, that's, yeah. that's how it worked out. Okay, so then you get here. How long did it take you to dive into this rivalry? Right with, with OU, like how long did how long did that take, and then what, what what was that what was that like? Well, I got to watch it a couple of years first, obviously being hurt, um, you know. But but that was actually one of the my freshman year was was one of the kind of my uh, breakout games and caught a touchdown that year, and so I got to kind of jump into it um, quickly. But I mean that that there is no other football game like it to me. I mean, of course you've seen you've seen a lot of stuff I hadn't seen. I hadn't really seen the whole SEC thing as much, but. Uh, you know, they split that thing just directly down the middle, burn orange and, and uh, crimson, and it's just like they're, they're right on top of you on the field. So the sidelines are, you know, there's no space between the sideline. You catch a ball and take two steps and your people are grabbing you, you know. Um, so, I mean, this, to me, this is, this is one of the ultimate rivalry games in all of college football. Uh, and this will pertain to this, our, our number one fan, Gene, with a question about, and I, I'll put it to both of you, about how does the Cotton Bowl tunnel experience, you spoke of it earlier, Sark, impact you guys emotionally, mentally, when you're standing in that tunnel before you take the field? I mean, it's one of the biggest rushes I, I, I think I've ever had in my entire life. And, um, you know, to, to come out – and that's a game, too. You, you They have to kind of – I mean, you have a lot of emotion. There's a lot of times where it gets almost physical before that game starts, and they have to kind of try to keep the players away from each other because uh, – and it doesn't really – this is one game where you can kind of throw the rankings out. It doesn't really matter who's – Who's supposed to be great? Who's not supposed to be great? It's going to be a dogfight, and um, and it's that way every year. You know, it's it's just there's nothing like it in all the world. Well, I think one thing that's unique about the Cotton Bowl that most people don't always know: most stadiums you go to, the visitors are some other place, the home team some other place, and they take the field and they play. At the Cotton Bowl, when you come out of your locker room, and they come out of their locker room, you're not but what is that? 30 feet? Not far at all. It, yeah. I mean, it's about 30 feet. There's both teams. There's both coaches. You're staring right at each other. Yeah. And so as the masses start going, it's like, who's going first? And we better get them out of here. This might not go well. So it is very, very unique. It gets the adrenaline quickly. And both teams throughout pregame are up and down that same tunnel. Yeah. So you're constantly just in and around it. It's very, very unique. But I agree with you. This is by far and away the best rivalry game in all of college football. I've been part of some good ones. The Iron Bowl, yeah. uh, SC UCLA, the Apple Cup at Washington. But this game is, is phenomenal. Just the setting, the state fair, 50-50, split right down the middle. Uh, and to your point, throw the records out. Like You, you better come to play Saturday at 11 a.m. if you want to win. Sark, you mentioned uh, in the press conference on Monday about the emotions, how you have to compartmentalize things and not let it – overdrive you like to say play with emotion but not play emotionally how challenging is it to get the guys to do that and, and Jordan let me ask out of you to be able to compartmentalize that use emotion but not let it drive everything you're supposed to be doing yeah I mean I'll, I'll say this. this this game to me always has felt like the team that can because because of all the emotions that come into it this is an easy game to kind of, you know, feel that stress and that pressure and, and to kind of push a little bit. And I feel like the team that it seems like goes out and just is able to have fun and enjoy the moment and embrace it and embrace the pressure and, and, and go out and really, I mean, having fun, I think, is the main thing. So, um, I mean, if I was going to say something to, to the guy, that's what I would say is, look, 
I mean, it's a big game, but use that and channel it in a good way, and and don't let don't don't feel the pressure and the stress of it. Use that to you know just enjoy the process and and uh, and have fun with it. Because if you have fun and you go out and play in this in this environment and you do well, oh man, it's there's nothing like it. It's re- it's really cool that you say that. So th- that's something I totally believe in the exact same thing. Like, and you have to take a moment to take in the moment. Mm-hmm. You, you, and I don't know if you, you guys saw, we, we actually put out a video of last year's when we took the field, and, there's, and it's kind of behind Quinn. And you see Quinn, when he gets about to the 50-yard line, kind of stop and yep. look around. You know, he's a kid who grew up in Dallas his whole life. He's been going to that game, and now he's actually on the grass. Yep. And so once you take the moment, you're like, how cool is this? Mm-hmm. Like, we get to do this. Yep. And so I think there is there's a mindset of, you know, there is pressure. We all understand that. But – Pressure can be a real positive when you recognize the opportunity that you have and enjoy it. Like, man, how cool. We, we actually get to be in this game. All these people are watching us perform, so let's go have fun doing it and, and do it at a high level and execute what we're trying to get done. Uh, Jordan went 4-2, and two, by the way, in his six years at Texas against, against OU. Four wins, right? Yeah, I was uh, the four years I actually played, we were 3-1. and one, so. Yeah. They got us one time, but we got them pretty good the other times. It's great to see you. I appreciate you coming by. Yes, sir. Jordan Shipley with us. Coming up, Sark and I will take a look at this week's opponent, the Oklahoma Sooners. We'll continue on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield.